Welcome to Old School Chemistry. We're going to look at a G exam question. This is from August 26, 2021, and it was the 9 a.m. test. We're going to examine question 18. This is a colligative properties question, specifically looking at freezing point depression. So let's look at the question. Uh, it says, the number of compounds which have freezing points greater than the freezing point of 0.1 molal ethanol. Now when it says greater, it means that it's higher. So for example, if I'm at, uh, let's say, a negative three degree C, a greater would be a negative two degree C. That's what they're asking. The answer for this, maybe just a little bit tricky, was zero. There was no answer. They gave four options and none of them were going to have a greater freezing point depression than, um, than ethanol. So let's look at the theory behind this. It comes from this formula. The change in temperature for freezing point. So this isn't the new freezing point, it's just the change uh, for the freezing point, how much lower it goes. is going to be I times Kf times M. Um, so again, change in freezing point, your delta T sub F. The I is called the Van Hoft factor. It's the number of particles that the solute will dissociate or ionize into. Um, colligative properties, it doesn't matter what the actual uh, solute is. All that matters is how many particles it produces. So it depends on the amount of particles. Kf, this is going to be a constant. It's a freezing point depression constant, and that will be the same for all of these, uh, that they will all have the same solvent. And then M, the little m, is molal. Remember, molal is a unit of concentration, and that's moles of solute divided by kilogram of solvent. Now, if we look at our comparison, let's just look at the ethanol. The change in freezing point for ethanol is going to be one. Ethanol is a non-electrolyte. It's non-polar, and so when you dissolve it, say, in water, it's going to stay together. It will not dissociate. It will not ionize. It will be one particle. So whenever you have a non-volatile, non-electrolyte, it's von, ha von Hoft factor is always one, okay? Non-polar molecules are always a one. Uh, so times Kf, the constant, times 0.1 molal. So you're going to end up with 0.1 times Kf, all right? So there we have it for our ethanol. Let's look at the four options that they gave us. So in our first option, we have a 0.1 molal uh, sodium sulfate. When this dissociates, it's going to produce two sodium ions and one sulfate ion, which gives us three total particles. So one, two, three, three particles. Plug this in, change in temperature for freezing point on the sodium sulfate, three times Kf times 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 Kf. Little side note, they gave us the same molality for each of these four, which means really we're just looking at the Van Hoff factor. How many particles do these break into? The more particles, the lower the freezing point. The fewer particles, the higher the freezing point. Um, okay, here we've got our barium sulfate. It has five particles. Look at this, the barium breaks into three barium ions and two phosphate ions. Three plus two, five particles, five particles. So the change in temperature for freezing point, remember freezing point depression, the freezing point is going to decrease this much from the pure freezing point uh, temperature. You're going to have five times Kf times 0.1 gives you 0.5 Kf. All right, let's look at the third one. We have 0.1 molal hydrochloric acid, HCl. This is going to ionize into two particles. One hydrogen ion plus one chloride ion gives us two particles, one plus one. So the change in temperature for the freezing point of the HCl, how much lower it's going to go, is two times Kf times 0.1 gives you 0.2. All right, urea. Oh, urea is also a molecule. So it's a covalent, non-volatile, non-electrolyte. Its Van Hoff factor is one. It doesn't break apart. It's just going to be one particle. Uh, so one particle, change in temperature of freezing for urea, one times Kf times it's 0.1 molal gives us 0.1. So here's your summary from this. The change in temperature for the sodium sulfate, barium phosphate, and the hydrochloric acid, those are all smaller, they're lower. You have a bigger change in freezing point temperature. So you're going to take the pure freezing point and subtract the change, it goes that much lower. These won't be greater. They will be a lower freezing point than the ethanol. And then the urea, 
it was the same. Urea was the 0.1 kF and ethanol was the 0.1 kF. Now, if you understand the principle of this formula, the molality is the same, kF is the same, so the change in temperature depends on I, you could quickly look and count particles, say three particles, five particles, two particles, one particle. This has one particle. I go, oh, none of these are going to have a greater freezing point. Urea will be the same because it has the same number of particles. And the other three are all going to be lower, smaller, because they have more particles. All right, good job. You're doing so great with your chemistry. Good luck on your test. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks.